See, when I ain't had no money, I still had sauce. See, if you don't got no sauce, then you, 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 you're lost. But you can also get lost in the sauce. What's happening? What you mean? Another episode of Sauce TV. We back at it. Uh, your boy DJ Sturgis. My guy is in the building. What's good? Awesome McCall. Man, you already know, man. We back at it. Uh, Thanksgiving break just happened. How was your Thanksgiving, man? It was cool. I went to my uncle's crib. Nice food, everything. My coach cooked the uh, brisket and sent it with my mom. So that shit was great. Mm, my coach be doing like little, little the grill competitions and shit like that. So his brisket and shit be up there, like no sauce type shit, and it be fire. Oh, so he the one type of niggas who be posting the brisket before he chop it up and he just be patting it like yeah type shit. He can <laughs> bro, he, like, he'll take the bone out of some maybe some shit with some bone like a uh, pork butter some shit and just yeah. fuck it up. I'll be like damn, bro. I never, I didn't even know this type of shit was possible. Yeah. No sauce. Yeah. Said. How was yours though? I mean, it was good, man. Um, I hosted uh, Thanksgiving at my house this year. First oh, where? Time. You usually go to NC? Huh? You usually nah, go to nah, nah, nah. I'd be, I don't go out of town. I'd be at my mama's house. Word, we word. eat good, but shit. A lot of my family from Carolina came down. Uh, it was a good time. My grandma was here. Uh, oh, word? It's hard. Yeah, man. You know, she stayed with me. Did you Asia. help make shit like this year? I didn't do shit. So they just pulled up and took over the house type shit. Yep. I only, okay. thing I, only thing I did was make sure I paid my share of the money for the food. And we was Gucci, man. I wonder if that's what my fr- I don't think they be doing that. I think everybody just got to bring, like, you got to buy your own shit and cook it, I think. I don't know if everybody put in, but that's what I'm going to do. Hey, that's the best way to do it, man, if you don't want to cook, man. Hey, especially if it's a lot of people. No, I feel that. Yeah, for real, for real, man. Uh, a lot of shit been going on. A lot of shit happened over, over Thanksgiving. Uh, going into Thanksgiving, Diddy and fucking Cassie. Am I, am I looking at you or the camera? Both. I'll right. <laughs> uh, so be looking. We looking at each other's eyes and shit for a long time. Right? Yeah. See what we set up. Yeah. It's awkward. This nigga awkward. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Diddy and Cassie. Uh, story broke out of nowhere. Um, okay, she was somewhere. suing him. Yeah. Uh, for thirty million dollars, yeah, she should. And uh, she alleged that um, he sexually assaulted her, uh, even raped her. Yeah. Uh, was a, was physically abusive, verbally abusive, and also even went as far as flying in Plus male seven. escorts oh. to make her have sex with, and he would sit there and watch it. That's what she was alleging in this um, lawsuit, and that shit got settled in twenty four hours. We got settlement twenty four. So what you so what you think about the settlement? How you feel about uh, her settlement? That was the first. first. That was the biggest. That was the fastest settlement. Okay. Of all time, I I don't think we've ever seen a settlement that a problem? happen in twenty four. It's not a problem, but I think for a lot of people, especially initially, it was like that's a real admission of guilt for you to go ahead and settle that shit that damn fast. I think it's but, cr- I think it's crazy how far we done came with the uh, settlement shit because I remember being a little kid whenever somebody was settled. That would be niggas' indication to be like, oh, well, she was lying or she wanted the money. Now we've arrived to the point where people understand that settling just makes sense sometimes. Yeah. Settling makes sense. There's no reason to have this long, drawn-out thing where you arguing with a fucking mogul, you know what I'm saying, in the public eye when you could get your money and effectively have him demonized in the public opinion. Like, especially if you already know Mm -hmm. that he did this shit and he has ways of getting, getting out of shit. I don't see nothing wrong with basically shifting the public's attention to somebody, getting your bread, and then disappearing. Hey, she, I'm with that. She did what she had to do. Uh, how much she settled for, nobody knows. She got more than 30. I don't think she got more than I, 30. Bruh, when, you sell, when you settle, you always getting less than what you asked for. So look, in my, this, so this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm thinking, right? I don't even think 30 is what she asked for initially. I think she asked for, uh, I think she probably asked for like between 50 and 70. Diddy probably was like, what? Nigga, do what you got to do. She did what she had to do, and then whatever shit, she probably asked for a more reasonable number in the actual lawsuit. They did the lawsuit shit, but then Diddy saw how this public opinion shit went. It was like, oh, we got to, we can't let this, this can't be. Like, she's including everything. She's not just coming at me. She's coming at uh, Revolt and all my other businesses. She, all of these other businesses in the lawsuit, she mm-hmm. got that shit. The way they worded that shit, it was like uh, Cassie was an employee of Mr. Combs. Like, not my girlfriend. Exactly. Not girlfriend, but this is like uh, an employee. So now you're dealing with that type of shit. I guarantee you, bro, he was, he a billionaire. He was in his bag. He was more than, he was more than likely in his bag. Like, do what you got to do. And then when he figured out, like, oh, shit, this is what you got to do? All right, go ahead. Get her right. Let's get her right so we can get get right in the damage control mode. 
Because if this play out over the next year, yeah. year and a half, they don't do nothing but make him worse. Yeah. He would have had to open up his books. He would have had to show a lot of shit. He worth billions. I mean, I don't know how much did he worth, but I'm assuming he's close to billion. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? You don't never want to open your book. Shit, I, I bet you wouldn't even want to open your fucking book. Fuck no. So why would I, if it's a billionaire, open myself up to all this other shit? But then that brings the question, why you didn't just pay her before? I'm not yeah. an advocate for this nasty nigga. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, how could you not pay her whatever she asks when all this shit is dumb believable? Hey. She didn't say nothing in that shit where I was like, oh, no, nah, Puffy could never. All that shit, even down to the flying niggas in to watch them fuck her, is like, Maybe. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's some shit. If somebody put that on your name, nobody's supposed to believe that you would pay men to fuck your girlfriend. Nobody should ever <laughs> believe that about you. But for people to be like, yo, you might have did that shit. Settle. You got to settle. You got to settle if everybody, if people I, would think you would do something like that, there's no telling what the public opinion would be. I'm one of them people who believe that if you are innocent. You fight it. You never settle. Exactly. You never settle. So what you talk about? Come on. But in this situation, in this situation, I could say maybe it was in his best interest to go ahead and settle. But either I way, you said even if he was innocent, it would matter made more sense. Yeah, and the reason why is R. Kelly. And, and what? What about explain? Because R. Kelly got convicted in the court of public opinion before he got convicted in the court of law. That surviving R. Kelly, part one and part two, and I think it was the part three, all of that led up to him getting indicted. And him being in prison. All that was used to put him in prison. So I think, and after seeing that, it's like, you know what? Okay. I would I, think I don't think he paid her 30. I don't think he paid her more than 30. I really do think it was like 20. I think it was more than 30. So. Nah. But it's like speaking of the R. Kelly thing, that would be to me, all right, so go back further. I would think him see I don't like putting the R. Kelly shit on people's name, but whatever. Like, R. Kelly got off that first time because they were able to pay a family off. And that's how he ended mm -hmm. up beating the first case. Most yeah. people thought that at the time. Uh -huh. That's why, in public opinion, R. Kelly was still getting killed because it was pretty obvious that he paid his way out of a situation. And the industry was kind of allowing him to move and maneuver however he wanted to. So he felt like he was on top of the world. The only reason R. Kelly even got caught was because he was waving it in people's faces. Damn sure and was. he was aggressive with it, saying shit like, Oh, uh, y'all should have caught me 10 years ago. He was dressing like yeah, he, he was a fucking... Sing. Yeah, he, yeah, he was tripping. Yeah. He used to dress like a seventh grader and shit. He was Bruh. weird as fuck. Bruh. So R. Kelly thought that he was above shit because he was able to beat the system with his money. I would think if you puff and you work in the same industry and you're even bigger and more powerful, you would say the same thing. Especially if this is somebody that you feel like you have a certain amount of control over. Yeah, I think the most damning thing in that situation was when people read about the Kid Cudi situation as far as, you know what I'm saying, the car being blown it. up. And when he confirmed it. That was it. I think that was enough to confirm everything at that I point. I thought when uh, the artists, the former artists that were around Cassie and uh, the label at the time, like mm -hmm. uh, Danny D. Kane and them came out and supported Cassie in her lawsuit, I was like, oh, okay. Well, they believe her. If they if they're backing her, they full on believe her. And they were around her during this time period. Then the security guard comes out. And it's like, yeah, I saw a lot of shit. Because she named a security guard yeah, in her report. Did. And that same dude is now talking, saying, it was more than Cassie. Yeah, okay. It was more than Cassie. Okay, but that right there is a part of the problem. Because one thing about it, when you have previously worked with that person. You have an NDA? No. Oh. But, I, but I see it like, you previously worked with me. Mm -hmm. You don't work with me no more. Okay. Okay, so that's the reason why you're speaking. Because you're not. Oh, because with you me can no say more. that you jaded at that point or something like that. Like you might have been. Yeah, it's fired. a little skew and like not to not do because I understand like you know his name was used in the, uh, the lawsuit and everything like that. But he has personal beef with Diddy too because he because his son is in prison right now for like he's been in prison like 12, 13 years. The security and, guard. Yeah, and he said that Diddy didn't help him with his son's case at all. And now you got a reason to be mad at me. But here's the thing. You saying that you stopped a whole bunch of stuff. If you was my personal security guard and you was with me every day, how much did you help me with? Well, that's, I, you know, it's crazy. I literally was just talking to somebody that is a security guard for uh, artists now. And he was telling me all the stuff that he has to do as far as taking phones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what do you do in situations where they, where they wild? Like? And he was just like, bro, I'm his security. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, bro, this shit dark, nigga. And he was just like, bro, like it's not like I'm finna stand by and watch somebody 
be attacked or something, but he was like, bro, if I don't know what happened, I got to back him. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not like I'm standing in the room with this nigga. So unless I hear somebody crying now or screaming, I'm not going to just bust in the room. Mm-hmm. So whatever happens in there, you know what I'm saying, I got to go off his word. And I was just like, man, that shit fucked up. Like, that it sound is. fucked up to me. It is. But at the same time, if you're going to work, how else are you going to work? If you... You gonna become the security guard that like you like it's like a sitcom and you you stop niggas from doing bad shit like as a security guard. That's not how this shit work. Mm-hmm. You there to protect the money yep. and the money. If the money is like a sick weirdo nigga, you either gonna keep the job or you gonna quit. Mm-hmm. And it sound like you saying bro didn't just quit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He he kept do- he was cool with all that shit until he wasn't. Which be my problem with a lot of shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Like niggas be cool with shit until they not cool with it. The same was the R Kelly thing. Like yep. niggas knew what R Kelly was on, so. And niggas know what Puffy is on, you know what I'm saying? It's clips coming out where niggas was saying shit, uh, you know what I'm saying, like the 50 Cent shit where he was talking about the pictures that was going around like in the early 2010s of Cassie, and he was just like, bro, like, there's some weird shit going on over there. Mm-hmm. Like, people thought he was playing when that happened, and now it looks like looked like he was trying to send messages and shit. So I understand settling, but settling, I'm, I'm with you, bro. Like, if I know I ain't did shit, I'm not settling. settling. We're going to go to court. Uh, we gonna, I'm going to call you a liar as many times as I can. I'm not going to care how people feel about me uh, saying that you a liar and shit like that because I'm going I'm to point out this motherfucker is an actual liar. It's real people that this shit happens to. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of the uh, two-stamp act or whatever. Uh, uh, what is it two-stamp? No, nah, it's, the, it's the Survivor's Act. Survivor's Act. I'm tripping. Mm-hmm. So, but that same thing where all of that stuff came out against, uh, you know what I'm saying, even the mayor of New York, Eric Adams, was even named in one of those from something that happened in 91 or 93 or something like that. Seeing shit like that, most of those things are not believable, but you know what I'm saying? It could have happened. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The only the only person out of the last couple of weeks who I feel like has been accused of something where it's like, nah, this nigga got some points. And the only reason he had points is because he was so adamant that, no, nah, this bitch is lying. And it was Jamie Foxx. I was mm-hmm. like, yo, Jamie Foxx is probably telling the truth. Jamie yep. Foxx said that this girl tried to do this before and it got thrown out or it wasn't, it wasn't like, tang- yeah, it wasn't tangible, got dismissed. Uh, the way the way the story the way she told the story and the shit was that she met him went upstairs with him somewhere and I think he like you know touched her or something mm. like that is what she said and she was saying it wasn't consensual mm. that may well be true but the fact that you've been trying to bring this case and he's so adamant that you didn't that he didn't do anything mm. wrong and that you are after money and stuff like that you know what I'm saying it's hard for me to without any proof back you yeah but when it comes to like somebody who you know what I'm saying. It's always been rumblings of how he handles women, you know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Or it's clear as day you date younger women because you got a certain amount of control over them because of the things you have, the influence you have, the positions you can put them in. And that's like your, your, your shit. Like, you get off with that. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to assume that you do some fucked up shit that I ain't yeah. heard about. But if you living right, it's, it's fucked up. Because a lot of the times the niggas that are living right still can be living wrong in the back. Uh-huh. But you just get more leeway. It's sad, bro, but that's just what it was. Like... A lot of niggas, a lot of, like, uh, R.P. Kobe, bro. A lot of niggas was backing Kobe, like, just off of, Kobe ain't never did nothing. I ain't never seen what Kobe mm-hmm. did. And then Kobe settled. And I've always been like, damn, Kobe settled. He settled, but he beat the case. He beat the case. He beat but the he case. settled to get it out. He settled first because he wanted to, he was trying to focus. Yeah. He was trying to focus it on was what the he finals. had to do. It, it was the finals during that trial, too. It, that was the whole 04 season. It, it happened in the summer. It happened, yeah. it happened in the summer, and it went through the whole season uh, yeah. when they lost to Detroit. So it, it was just one of them things where, like, it, it is a case-by-case case thing, but seeing how people – people people usually try to back their people if they really believe them. Yeah. And Puffy had no one. Puffy got a, a huge ecosystem. No one that was tangible came out and backed him. You got niggas like Aaron Hall sticking up for Puffy. And then a week later, Aaron Hall is uh, getting, getting shit sent to him. Yeah, but it's like it's hard to back somebody when those allegations come because when you publicly back somebody and and and, 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 and is, in the wrong. Yeah, but even if you're not in the wrong, if you back somebody who's accused, then people bash you. Then you stuck in the Sometimes. situation. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like y'all just went and backed him. You know what I mean? And y'all didn't know nothing yet. You know, so well, I got, why would, that's that's anything. I'm fine. I'm perfectly. I'm cool being wrong. For assuming that somebody isn't evil, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm cool with that. Like I don't want to assume that you fucked up and going to hell and do all this evil shit to people and be wrong. I'm I'm fine assuming that you're innocent. And if I end up being proven wrong, it's fuck you. I'm not the type of person to hang on to yeah. that shit. If you if I believed in you and it turned out that I was wrong, mm-hmm. it's fuck you, bro. Because you made me believe. I believed I believed that you weren't a piece of shit. 
And that's why a lot of people don't come out publicly because of that right there. Because because, because a lot of people don't even want to go through that phase of damn. I don't think I it's that hard. Wrong. I don't think it's that hard, bro. When I you think talking people about tripping. when we talk about these type of allegations, mm -hmm. like you know, like rape is one of the worst things you can have on your jacket, or that you could do to a person. Yeah. Something. So like for that right there, it's just like people don't publicly come out. I think I think the way the the time that we live in, people are scared of having to come out and say I was wrong. And I don't think it's something wrong with, bro. I believed in this nigga because this nigga ain't never did nothing to me. He always been a good. Uh, Bill Cosby, right? When the, when, the, when the shit first started with Bill Cosby, for for other comedians to come out and back Bill Cosby initially, I thought that made sense. I also thought it made sense the more and more people came out and the more it was clear that this nigga was weird as fuck, people started to make jokes and make fun of him and distance themselves and then say, oh, yeah, we was wrong. I thought that shit made sense. Some people got killed for that. I don't think it's something wrong with assuming that someone isn't the worst person ever mm -hmm. and then finding out that they are. I would yeah. much rather that than the opposite, bro. Uh, I feel what you're saying, but it's just a dicey situation. It I is. mean, I, I, I don't, I can't say that he's guilty, but I can't say that she lying either. You know I can't. What I'm I, I don't feel like you could do it with any, any, even the puffy shit. Like all this shit is alleged. He settled. Like it's not like yeah. my problem. Sometimes I wish. That even when shit is settled, we could get a, de a definite answer. Like, there, yeah. we, I need, there needs to be like, people die and it gets brought up. Like, like, I was just talking about Kobe. People still would bring up the fact that Kobe settled that case and don't know that they won a, uh, a version of the case. And stuff like that. Like, you don't want st shit like that attached to your name forever, especially if you really didn't. Like, yep. if, if, if Jamie Foxx settles with this lady because he wants her to go away more than anything. That's people not gonna do. read into that and like that. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying. It's not to say that Jamie Foxx couldn't be just as terrible as Diddy with the same power and access as Diddy. It's just that with his track record and the type of person he's been over the last 20 years in the industry and people's firsthand accounts with him, I've heard uh, video girls talk about how he didn't take advantage of them mm -hmm. and how he was the person to tell people to chill and shit like that. When I hear stuff like that, it just gives me a, it. It gives you a certain amount of leeway. Yeah, and I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm going to rock with you until I have a reason not to. I don't have a reason not. Somebody saying that you did something in them happens to celebrities every day. Yeah. I don't got a reason to not back you. Yeah. But if she come with some tangible shit, some shit that could only be known by y'all two or y'all or you and people that's in your tight circle and you said you ain't even know this girl, I'm going to start leaning. That's really what get niggas when they come out and say, oh, I don't even know the bitch. And then she started saying <laughs> shit, and it's like, nigga, you clearly know this girl. Yeah. And then it's like, bro, you probably lying about, I don't know what you lying about now, nigga. So like if you do if you on that type of time, you already fuck with me, really. Yeah. Um, but Puff probably Puff going through it, bro. He gonna get, he he got name uh in some more lawsuits. Um it's probably gonna be more yeah, people speaking more. out. He just stepped down from Revolt, found out that he really didn't do shit at Revolt anymore either, other than be the ambassador. Yeah. Uh I didn't know that. I thought he was actually helping run things and come up with shows and curate things. Uh nah. I uh a shout out to one of my OGs who helped him launch the uh brand, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he used to tell me all about it back in the day, but um, you know, and back to the situation, I think one thing that really stood out to me was the fact of it's like people don't realize what like how Cassie's career went after she got with Diddy. It, it was stopped. nothing. It stopped. Yeah, it stopped. Exactly. Exactly. You would see her with the rest of the bad boy team, but you ain't had no music. That was his girlfriend. No nothing. It, it, exactly. And I and I do think that part of her lawsuit, along with the allegations, part of her suing him was for her career because it stopped when I got with your ass. I had a song that was on probably. 106 Apart, was MTV, me and you now, and then out of nowhere, I get with you. People don't hear shit. Dog, he was, she was not featured on Last Train to Paris. I know. I remember. How the fuck? I, 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 like, I went back and researched. I'm like, yo, she's not featured on this shit. Make it make sense when she is I can make it make sense. She wanted, he wanted her reliant. And she was. Yeah. And to a point, you know what I'm saying? Whether all this shit that happened happened or not, you know what I'm saying? She's saying she was whooping her ass too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything about everything about what she said is believable. The fact yep. that he was like almost 40 years old and she was 19 when they met. Uh, the fact that, you know what I'm saying, according to her, he pressured her into sexual situations and it ended up just be, becoming what it became. Yeah. That's believable too because I've heard that happen plenty of times without people being celebrities. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? When you put money into that situation to access... Hell yeah, I believe that shit. Um, 
You know what I'm saying? It's a certain type of nigga. You got to be a certain type of nigga to even get down like that anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know that you shouldn't be fucking with no 19-year-old if you almost 40 years old. Yeah. Whether it's, you know what I'm saying, it's legal, but you know what I'm saying, morally, you know this is a kid. Yeah. You know she, you know she's, I got to stop doing this because sometimes I get I get in trouble because I say stupid when I should say ignorant. Kids are ignorant. You're taking advantage of, you're taking advantage of ignorance and you're abusing her youth. Yeah. That's all that shit is. Mm-hmm. So if you... You know what I'm saying? People say silly shit like, oh, she's 19 or she was grown. Why would she decide to be with this old man? I was like, bro, if a millionaire walked up to you and you were 19 and said, if you come with me, you can do these things, you might have did it, nigga. You don't know. Man, Beyonce or exactly. Rihanna come to me right now and we and we exactly. going. We going. But I think some people will argue that, okay, uh, here's the thing about abusive relationships. You don't know that that person is abusive until they and, abuse you. And, and they yeah. abuse you. And the thing is, by that time, you already deep. People you are saying love like bombing. That. People are using love bombing as an example, and I think it's it's an okay example because you know love bombing just love bombing really some pimp shit. Like you know what I'm saying mind games, like getting into somebody's head with overly being the overly affectionate and shit like yeah. that. Not as far as like oh I'm just trying to hop down on some shit, but like you're trying to basically. Every need she needs, you feel that need, so she then becomes reliant on you for those needs, and now you can use that shit. And may, it don't even take that long. You just seen it play out. You, can see, I've seen it play out plenty of times in real life yep. without niggas having money. So I yep. know it can be done. Yep. I definitely know it's easy as hell to do with money. Yep. And a lot of niggas didn't even think of that shit like that because it was just this: how I'm trying to get off. This how I'm trying to get at her. You know what I'm saying? But for her to become reliant, that's like a lot of niggas got that same plan of action. So like, I feel for, and I feel I feel for anybody to end up in that situation. But it yeah. also is like you should know better, but you don't know better because you're a kid. That's the whole point. That shit don't work on hoes that's 30, 40 years old because they've seen it before. Yeah, yeah. So if you ain't never seen that shit before, and a nigga goddamn got two hundred thousand dollars in cash, and he talking about let's go to Paris and we can do all this extra shit, you gonna and jump you in ain't the chair. Work to do. You it. don't gotta do shit. shit. And if you not tw- you're not even twenty years old, you basically. You basically are going to go from my parents took care of me to now this nigga is going to take care of me. And not only is this nigga going to take care of me, I get to be famous mm-hmm. on top of that just for being with this nigga. Now I got fans because I'm pretty. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the pipeline. I can't knock somebody that's 19 for not knowing that that doesn't really, mm-hmm. this this fantasy that you're talking about doesn't actually exist without you yeah. giving something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But somebody that would have been his age would have known that shit. You don't mm-hmm. think, R.I.P., you don't think Kim Porter understood exactly what type of time Puff was on by the time they started to separate? You know what I'm saying? Shit gets shit gets sticky when people get older and they can see through your yeah, bullshit. of course. I done heard niggas talk about, like, that's, that's why niggas love young girls because they don't have any understanding of anything. The tricks that don't work on girls at your age work on them because it's the first time they've seen that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you are a, an established man. Like, if you have any, if you, even if you just got a little bit of motion, you know what I'm saying? Even and if I you got a network, you know what I'm saying? Because I dated a, a girl who was, what, seven years younger than me, you know what I'm saying? And it was a big difference, you know what I'm saying? But I, like, like, I could tell. Like she gravitated to me more because I had more, you know what I'm saying? And I still, I wasn't too. even on. I wasn't even yeah. on. Like the money I'm making now, I was not making back then with her. She was actually making more money than me. She ain't know that though. She probably just wasn't used to the yeah. stuff, like the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Being having to do the access and shit exactly. like that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I don't, bro. I'm. I feel like I'm pretty straightforward when I deal with like girls and shit like that about what I don't want to do and yeah. what I'm willing to do. I make it known like what I'm. What my motion looking like versus cause I like I'd be like, yo, we could do all this nice shit. I ain't having it like that. But yeah. we can do nice shit. Like for yeah. some reason, I got access into this. You wanna go to the VIP here? We could do that. Yeah. I know somebody that worked there. Now, if we if I didn't know that nigga, could we go to the VIP? No. no exactly. But you and me, so you're fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like I think shit like that, it should be perks to dating someone. It should you should care about who you're dealing with. Yeah. But it's a line between you trying to make a bitch, you trying to be a bitch dad, or you trying to be her boyfriend. Cause if you're trying to be her dad, you want her to feel re- you want her to feel connected to you mm-hmm. for life, nigga. I don't need that shit. I really I try to avoid <laughs> that shit, bro. I don't want you to feel like you finna rely on me yeah. to make sure you good. If you feel like you gotta re- if you feel like you can rely on somebody, then yeah, that is beautiful. But it's the difference between being able to rely on someone and being reliant on them. That means you can't live without this nigga doing something for you. That's uh-huh. different than being able to. If I'm fucked up, I can hit this nigga up and he can make sure I'm good on the rent. Yep. They're not the same thing. Yeah. And you don't learn most of that shit, including as a boy. It's not, it's not just girls. 
You don't learn that shit until you in your twenties. Yeah. You don't figure out that this shit not it, unless somebody teaching you. Yeah, but my little cousin. Knows. At, at the end of the day, I, I was having this conversation with some um like with my family over Thanksgiving, and you know, like one thing about it. You, I mean, you can't get blindsided by a whole bunch of shit, you know, especially if it's new to you and everything, and you mm-hmm. can be ignorant. But there's certain things that you know you're just not going for. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. Certain disrespects, physical violence, shit like that. But I or think- anything, or anything, anything. Period. Like, um, I I used Eddie Long as an example with the with it's the boys in his situation. You know what I'm saying? You know, I um, like during the time when the case was going on. It was a lot of people saying, well, you know what? I mean, his influence, he's a pastor, yeah, you know? know, and like, you know, like that's why they went for it. Nah, I grew up in the church. Nigga, you could have came to me when I was 10 years old. I guarantee you, you would have not touched me. Fit. He knew he probably was going, well, more than likely happened, he was going after kids that had pr- trouble, that had like emotional trouble and shit like that, just how the priest were. Nah, going after gay. kids. Nah, don't that's what gay. I'm saying. <laughs> you, you could be, uh, you could be, you, you, but you I'm saying, think about gay. it. Think about it like this, though. You gay, you in Atlanta, and you not even 10 years old. You got to figure out how you're going to live. You got to figure out how to even come out and shit like that. So finding kids that's an emotional turmoil and being a shoulder to cry on as an adult and then using that to take advantage of them, that make perfect sense to me, especially if a nigga is sicko. That's some sick shit to go yeah. through. Yeah, that's some sick shit to go through. But, but he it- sound like he did it. Who? I mean, like Eddie Long, like to me, when I first yeah. when that first <laughs> happened, I was still in high school and I was like, oh, this nigga was fucking the sad kids. Oh, this nigga, this nigga's sick. Like he fucked, oh, shit. Like the same when I, you ever seen the movie Doubt uh, about the priests in Boston where they kept moving all the priests oh, around yeah, and shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. nigga. When I first saw that and I was like, oh, this shit just universal. Like, oh, they see kids like the sad kids that nobody trying to play with, and oh, they might be gay or maybe they got molested or some shit. Uh-huh. And them niggas, that's like that's like the fine stripper at the club for these niggas. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, I can never, I can never be one of these niggas. Yeah. Like when I see sad kids, I get sad. So it's like, bro. When you, when you, I don't know. I just feel like certain, certain lines you just you draw morally in the sand for yourself as mm-hmm. you grow up. Like when I, re- like uh, when I was younger, right? I used to think uh, deep conversations with girls. You know what I'm saying? And then you figure out like, oh, a lot of these girls is like they fucked up. Like, yeah, a lot of fucked up yeah. shit going on. Like, oh, my uncle did this. My cousin did this. My dad did this. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? Unless you're fucking stupid. Or you not like getting no pussy or anything, you kind of realize a correlation between that girl and the freaky girl. And you like, right. oh shit. Well, this is great. And then unless somebody stops you, you fucking turn into a monster. For me, my cousin, I was talking to my cousin one day, and I told, I'll never forget. I told him, uh, the girl I was dating, I was in ninth grade. I had just lost my virginity. She was like in 10th or 11th grade. Uh, the girl I was dating, I took her to a man, I took her to Arbor Place. We was eating. She spilled some food on her shit. I was I had money. My mom sent me to the mall with back to school money, nigga. I was feeling like I was feeling real peace. So I was like, shit, let's go buy you some jeans. Yeah. Went in there, bought some jeans, and I fucked in the uh dressing room, or an American Eagle dressing room. And I remember I was telling my older my cousin that's my god brother, I was like, Man, I, I love this girl, nigga. I just fucked her in the dressing room and she be doing all this extra shit and we'll be at school. And he was like, You fucked her in the dressing room, like, like outside in public? And I was like, Yeah. He was like, You don't you don't love that girl. And I was like, yeah, I do. He was like, tell me about it. And I told him. And he was like, nah, but tell me about it. And I told him, like, some fucked up shit that she had went through. He was like, you fucked up. You taking advantage of it. And I was like, what? Nigga, she older than me. And that's how I learned. First of all, it don't matter how old you are. Yeah. It's about what you know and what you don't know. Yeah. She didn't even know that what she had was, like, this severe emotional trauma. Yeah. He was like, you taking advantage of the fact that she needs somebody to talk to. And I was like... I guess like I, I remember I had to talk to her about it, and I felt really weird after that yeah. dealing with her. Like I could never, it never was the same after that. Yeah, and I was just like, all right, bro, I this is my, this is what I'm taking away from this. Like if somebody got some some deep ass problems and shit like that, yeah, you could talk to them, but you shouldn't be. You are not, this no longer is a normal conversation now. You shouldn't be yeah. looking at her like she's still like for the kill type shit. Yeah. You gotta look at her and be like, all right, what can I? What's up? Like, you good for real? Like, are you really you? good? Yeah, like, I don't, because, like, bro, girls be cutting themselves yeah. and all this other shit. Things that you don't even care to ask when you're growing up and you're young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now that I'm older, I know I need to ask them. Sh- I know I need to ask them questions, and you need to, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to take advantage of somebody when they're super emotional and shit, because then yeah. you end up in situations where, where you know what I'm saying? What, what what about when they get they come to their senses and they realize what kind of man you are? Yeah. Or what if they become reliant on you and now they're crazy? You know what I'm saying? They're out of their mind. This same girl showed up at my house. Uh, 
She showed up in my house when I tried to cut things off. You know what I'm saying? Ran away from her home. And my mom had to call call her people. And I was just like, damn, this is my, this, I learned my lesson. Yeah. I learned my lesson. Like, this is, that, that was wrong in me. I was 14. I shouldn't have did that. And after that, I was just like, bro, it feels icky. It feels icky if I, if I, because before that, I was trying to talk around that shit. Yeah. I was just like, man, yeah, yeah, I know your cousin, but you know what I'm saying? You coming? You know what I'm saying? That's how I used to be. Now it's like, all right, if, some, if she tell you something like that, you got to have a real conversation yeah. and see if she is good for real because yeah. that's not no normal shit. Like, shit like that didn't happen to me. Yeah. Ain't nobody molest me. Yeah. So to me, this shit is all foreign. So it's like, all right, bro, you got to learn. I feel like if you don't learn that, though, I would have been the same nigga, bro. I would have just been walking around, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, word. Yeah, yeah. You give me some pussy? Yeah, up. like, yeah. you know, if, if he, if I tell him this to this day, bro, if he didn't tell me that, I would have never known that because if nobody, it never came up. My mama don't know to talk to me about, uh, not being a fucking emotional terrorist and not, you know what I'm saying, taking advantage of shit like that. Because my mama didn't do that. Yeah, you know, it's good that you got him in your life, but to wrap up this Diddy and Cassie thing, I think one thing that kind of solidified things for me is when somebody reminded me that he real life was kicking it with Lori Harvey after she was messing with his son. Yeah, I remember that. And they had matching outfits. They said it wasn't that, you know. yeah. They wasn't that. I mean, they're probably kicking it, but it's like, dog, that 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 whole shit to me just it was just, crazy. Yeah, like yeah, that's crazy. You don't live in reality, bro. You gotta think about how rich he is and how long he's been rich. He's yeah, not in reality, I, I, I'm I'm with all of that. I'm with all of that, but it's also like, well, you know, it's it, not an excuse. I'm not saying that that's an excuse. I'm saying that's a problem, nigga. Hey, hey you, you know should what live in reality. Hey, hey, when you come to money and power, only thing it does is just bring out who you really are. You know what I'm saying? And I do think. Part of his reason why he wasn't with Kim, cause I, cause I, I knew that he was in love with Kim yeah. and everything, and I and I got people who was friends with Kim. I got a homeboy who was Diddy's personal chef. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He was with Diddy when he got the news about Kim passing. He was in the room with him. Yeah, you know, I think Kim was more so like, okay, yeah, you got Cassie, you not really serious with this girl, but she's fulfilling your needs, and you want to do what you want to do. So go ahead. We we love each other, but yet you gotta. I'm gonna let you do your thing over there. I think that was part of the situation with Kim, and that's why you know things was peaceful or whatever. He's not but, changing. Yeah, you know, I think he's not. He's 40 years old, bro. He's he not 55. He's 54. I'm talking. Yeah, now I was just talking yeah. about like early 2010s. He's like 40 yeah. years old, so she probably was like, "This is him. Yeah, this, this is, is who you are. This is what it is. Uh, we got kids, but this is." Yeah, this is you. Yeah, and and, I've, and, I've, and now you got the whole situation with uh with Young Miami. You know, and people kill me. Ain't said shit. People kill me for uh, last year when I was on her ass. I was on. Well, you. I had a pod. You. I had a. Uh, I had another podcast. Me and my partners that we did called the Green Box, and we literally, me and my nigga Paul was in a room full of niggas trying to explain uh, predatory behavior, and we was trying to explain because we was like Diddy's a predator. Like we brought up Diddy, it literally brought up Diddy, brought up Cassie. It was like, yo, he start. I literally said, yo, he started fucking with Cassie when she was like nineteen, bro. He would have been like 35, 36, somewhere in there. This nigga's a weirdo, bro. Just because young Miami is fucking older don't mean that she's, it's not the same amount of weird. If anything, the nigga 10 years older, it's the exact same amount of weird. It's the literal same amount of weird. She 27, 28, you 50-something years old. You're taking advantage of her for not understanding how this shit goes. She new to whatever, whatever this lifestyle is you live in. To me, it's not the same. Like, however you're living, you're opening new doors for this person. I I'm not saying that she doesn't benefit and enjoy it. I'm saying that she's ignorant to it. She's I ignorant disagree. to what's going on. I disagree. I, I think know. I think that he I think that him he understands that Miami got more sense. My young Miami got a lot of sense because she from the streets. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's not real. Uh, okay. Like, no, 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 no. Like for real. Like, like, yeah, she probably never dealt with a nigga on that level who got that much money, access, power, influence. You ain't never dealt with no mogul. Okay, cool. But I think that he knows that she got a little bit more sense than most, and that's why they get to have all that fun or whatever. I, think, I don't I don't think he's doing I'm, he's doing wild shit with her. I don't know what wild shit. I don't think he's watching her fuck another nigga. I don't, I don't know think if she's doing, doing I don't know if she was getting down like that, but what I think is Young Miami is somebody that, see, I don't want to say this. I think Young Miami's pushed a certain culture forward in uh, hip hop. And one of the things that they advocate for is enjoying your your whoever you're dealing with, yep. their financial situation. Yep. And I think that's what she was doing. Yep. She probably thought Diddy was cool, uh -huh. thought he was cute or whatever. 
and thought about all of the shit that she could have and could do she by dealing it. with this nigga and getting it, including getting awards for podcasts and shit. That stuff she like only that. filmed once yeah, a month. that she filmed not even once a month, twice a year maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yep. All of these different doors being opening, all this fun, all these trips, all these bags. While you're making your own money and you're getting to put it to the side because this nigga feels like he got to do these things, it's probably great. You don't understand that this nigga is sick. <laughs> He's sick and he you he would have did this to anybody that was fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that doesn't mean, just because you get something out of it and you might not see it that way initially, that don't mean you're not getting preyed on. I guarantee you it doesn't. I guarantee you the first couple of years, Cassie probably didn't feel like she was being preyed on. But it was always she was being preyed on. She just didn't realize what was going on because she was enjoying it. Just like Miami was enjoying it. Yeah. That's why she's not speaking up. There's no reason to. I don't, you know what I'm saying, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to shoot bail for not speaking up when you clearly see what's going on with the nigga you publicly been dealing with. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't feel like that's her job, you know what I'm saying, necessarily yeah. to say something about this nigga being a weirdo. I think you should distance yourself from a nigga that yeah. clearly, clearly grooms people and then I want you to look, to, I think it would be crazy for her to not look across and realize, damn, how old is Cassie? Oh, we the same age? Oh, man. If she was getting preyed on, you know what I'm saying? That's where my brain goes. Like, Cassie, 28, 29, 30 years old, somewhere in there, right? That's the same shit. Like, that's literally the same thing. If he would have met her when she was 19 and she looked like that, maybe the same shit happens. So to me, it's hard for me to not, all that shit fall on, bruh. Stop dealing with hoes half your age, nigga. Stop, nigga. It's okay. Bruh. It's five hoes listen, that's 40. Listen, listen. Hey, I'm going to say this. I see what you're saying. But it's fine hoes is 35, 40 I, I, years I, I, old. I bro. see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I'm going to say this because I had to experience it for myself. When you get up to that level and you got money and you can get any woman you want, you will go for the 20 year olds. I promise you. Man, bro. It's, it's it, hoes like that's that. going to be your be like age, that. bro. It's going to be hoes your age that's fine as fuck, that's in the top of their feet. It's tons of niggas when that's been that much money bro. and you, you want to have fun. You ain't getting that with no 40, 50 year old woman. Man, that shit is for the club and all this shit. I'm not talking about you. I'm not saying you can't ever have sex with somebody that's in their 20s if you in your 40s. What I'm saying is when you basically turn them into your pet and all this other weird shit, that's a lot, bro. Just fuck girls, your age. just deal with women your age. You can fuck who you want to. But as far as like public relationships and I'm doing this or I'm pushing my career, just Diddy's deal in a with position them. where he can't just have a type that like that type of relationship. Bro, Diddy can there's no you, you're not finna, you're not gonna convince me that Diddy can find a woman in his age range that was fine as hell that like going out. He, they hoes in his age group grew up in the nineties and the eighties. They okay. do that shit. Okay. They have fun. It's bro, a, think about candy. Nah. Candy is age. Huh? Candy and them are Diddy age. Yeah. You telling me he couldn't find one of them type of hoes and make them all this other shit? Come on, bro. Bro, I see what you're saying. Leaks? I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Bro, give it a few more years. Man, and these hoes. About. All I'm I saying had the is this hoes, myself. bro. I had the experience it myself, so I understand it. I'm telling you, and then especially, especially being around other guys who are of that stature, who are famous, who, who got influence, who got money, I saw it with them. I saw that with them. It was the same thing. It was just like, yeah, you know what? I may be in my 40s, but this chick 25, and she cool as fuck, so I'm going to fuck with her. It be like that. It be like that. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just one of them things, you know? And uh, as we wrap up this whole Cassie situation, like I do think her settling kind of – I mean, like, like she got she she got backlash. She got serious backlash for settling so fast because so many victims of sexual assault, rape, and things like that. I was a little sad. You know not, what I'm saying? Like they was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, we was coming out, we was supporting you, and then you settled so damn fast. So like now, it, was, like, it, it, it 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 took the steam out of a lot of shit. But one question I do have: she left Diddy for a nigga that he introduced her to, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. She alleges. That he had male escorts flown in, had sex with them. He filmed it. He watched it. All this other shit like that. You think he didn't keep them tapes? Never mind. He kept them tapes. Here's the thing. One, one question I may have is this. The dude that you left him for, did you have sex with him when y'all was together? Was that one of those situations? Only reason why is because that muddies the waters a little bit. Because. What? Because if you're alleging that he had you do all these egregious things, but then you went and married one of the dudes and had kids with one of the dudes that 
What you mean? Like one of the dudes, like, like, was he like one of the prostitutes? Yeah, like, like, was this oh, one of the dudes doubt, that you slept I doubt, with? I doubt that he no, was like a prostitute. No, no, I think no he, he was, was like, he wasn't a prostitute. He was a trainer. But what yeah. I'm asking is, but what I'm, but the thing is, did. Did you sleep with him while you was dealing with Diddy? Because because if you're alleging that he had you do this, but then you went and married one of those dudes, to me that shit pretty like I don't think that matter like that. Because if you marry just because you marry one of the dudes, that don't mean all she was naming people in the lawsuit that she considered good people, people that would help her, people that looked out for her. Okay, I, maybe her husband was one of those people, but I don't. Okay. I doubt she would marry somebody that stood by while she was getting her ass beat. And why she was getting raped. That wouldn't make sense. Yeah. But if she, like, what, make, what makes sense to me is that her husband was just one of those good guys. Because the same way just the security guy you was just talking about, she looks at that dude as a good guy that was in that situation with her. Yeah. He probably stopped her from getting her ass stomped out to all type of shit. I'm no telling what the, what the trainer do to do. But I don't think, I don't think that make, like, I don't think that would matter It makes like a that. difference when people are trying to muddy the waters and try to say that you are lying. It makes a difference then. But what you going to say? You married the trainer dude. How can I be evil? Huh? Like, what you going to say to that? No, 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 no. Basically, somebody who's supporting Diddy. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of them people, but somebody who's supporting Diddy, they can make that argument. You you could even bring, I'll guarantee you, if they really had to go to court for this situation, I guarantee you a lawyer would ask, yo, so did you sleep with your husband who you left him for, even though he introduced he introduced you to your husband? Did he set up a situation where y'all two slept together? Well, that, that that's would be a real weird. question. That would be weird if she if he set up some weird like made if he like had something to do with them hooking up. That would be weird. But I in my mind, this is just me. I would think it, logically what would make sense is that she was looking for a way out and didn't like Diddy like that. This dude that she was attracted to. Probably, you know what I'm saying, was there for and it led to one thing or another. That's like with me knowing nothing, yeah. just going off what would make sense in yeah. my head, how I would want to explain things if yeah. I was him. Yeah. Um, but if it was like some weird ass, like, did he set us up because he wanted me to be, stop, like, that would be something different. So, yeah. I, but just in general, I think that, I think that she didn't really do nothing wrong about settling. I was a little up, yeah. uh, uh, initially, I was a little mad. Let me not say upset. I was pissed off that she settled. Because I'm one of them niggas where it'd be like, bro, I get so tired of folks asking like how niggas be getting away with shit. And then like when when the when the ho when the when when the hoes be settling, and I don't mean hoes as in like they're whores. I mean just the hoes cause I cause they niggas. Um, I mean cause they not niggas. But when the hoes be settling, I be feeling bad because it's like, damn, bro, let's get these stupid these sick ass niggas off the street, bro. And I understand I exactly. Say. I understand exactly why they settled though. Like when I I got mad and I was like, "Damn, bro, why the fuck she settled?" My homie was like, "Why not?" I was like, "Bro, they supposed to get you can get all these weird ass niggas off the street. What you gonna let this nigga walk around and do this shit for the next that's 10, 15 why, years?" That's why it was a civil suit, and, and it was. And my dog said the same. My he literally said, "Why she gonna get paid?" And everything she said, this nigga did is not public record. Anybody can go look it up and ask for it to be sent to him. Page by page, detail by detail, no matter what, his name always going to be tied to raping, abusing, and doing terrible shit. And especially with people confirming all these things. And it hit me, and I was like, you're right. Don't nobody think that he innocent. Like, he basically, he not going to go to jail. And, you know what I'm saying, just reasonably speaking, even though he did do some heinous shit, they were two consenting adults until they weren't. Yep. And then she ended up leaving. No matter, like, I'm sure he did terrible things to her, but she didn't bring, she didn't like bring it up until it was, you know, far apart. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay. He, he gets to go free. Technically he got his money, but he had to give her what she asked for. Yeah. And he got a deal and he has a deal with the public backlash. And this ain't one of them things where he could be quiet for a couple months. And yeah. it's not, gonna, every time did he pop up? It's going to be this. It's going to be about this. He's not going to be able to clear his name. Cassie, uh, hopefully never talk about it. If I was her, I would never talk about it. She not. Yeah, I would that's never part of ever. That settlement. That yeah, part of that settlement. Probably NDA. That NDA I never talk quiet. about it. I would never clear nothing up. I would never give no understanding. I would just be like, bro, he settled. Yep. Take that what y'all would. Yep. If he was going, if 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 he thought he could have beat that case, he wouldn't have settled. Mm -hmm. And yep. I and I don't believe you know what I'm saying. You could be worth a hundred billion dollars. Don't nobody want to pay nobody thirty million dollars for doing damn nothing. Right. You damn right. Don't nobody want to do that. Yeah. So he, you know what I'm saying. You can believe what you want to. I'm not going for a nigga giving uh, eight figures out. Uh, when they're innocent. Yeah. I'm just not going. You yeah. could be worth Me a million. Neither. Me neither. I ain't going, but uh, in closing, I'm going to say this. Also pay attention to the time when she left Diddy. 
When, when was Kim that? Party, like 2014? When Kid when Kim Porter died. Okay. I didn't know this when she left. She left when Ken Porter died at his lowest, and that was the real escape. Now, now I can really go because you ain't paying attention to me. Yeah, that's fucked up. Sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I felt that way too. Like I felt that I felt like that was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like for her to leave at that time. But at the end of the day, with all this coming out now, it's like that was perfect timing for her to leave. You I know think what so. Saying? It was perfect timing, and that is what it is. I didn't even uh, know she was dealing with uh, Kid Cudi. Uh, yeah. That was the early 2010s when that happened. I when don't he did that shit neither. But it this is wild shit. But I always say this, man. Don't let it be you. It, you know, I, like it don't matter what side of this argument you stand on, Cassie or Diddy. Just don't let it be you, and that's all that really matters. You know what I'm saying? But most importantly, uh, you know, like we we support all sexual assault. Survivors, victims. Yeah, we 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 always go get them that. niggas. I'm yeah, with it for real. Yeah, we I'm with, with it, bro. It. We with it for real. I ain't got no problem with nobody ever accusing nobody of nothing, bro. Because I can, I be feeling like it ain't that. Like I be feeling like if you really ain't do that shit, bro, it ain't that hard to prove. It ain't that hard, bro. Like I've seen, I've seen. No, I'm just talking. I'm not talking about like as a celebrity, right? I remember uh, when we was in when I was in high school. This kid got. Uh, they tried to say that he raped this girl, right? Oh. But what happened was. They had sex and he was lame about it and told everybody. Yeah. She got embarrassed and said it was right. So he had all he did was they all they was all in the office. I remember this happened so fast yeah. that he was back with everybody by the end of lunch and the girl had was gone. Oh. So he went to lunch. I mean, he went to the he went to the assistant principal and the nigga was like, "Yo, she's saying you did this." Her parent was up there. His mom was there. He didn't even know his mom was gonna be there. Yeah. His mom was there and he was like, "She said what?" And then she was like, "Yeah, you write me." And he pulled up the text messages from before and after whatever they said happened. Uh-huh. And the girl's mom took one look at it and took the girl out of school and, like, was mad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Grabbed yeah, her grabbed, and took her out of school. Get your ass out of yeah, school. Yeah, type yeah, shit. because you and, lied now. And then, he, and then he got in trouble with his mom for being in that. His mom was mad that he even yeah. was having sex. At, it was, like, 15. So he was. his mom was like, what the fuck are you even doing? Like, this is what I told you. You need to stay away from, like, that type of shit. But in my head, I was like, damn, it's that simple. Like, just keep up with... Keep your messages. Make sure you, you know, you're covered. Make sure you ask questions. Like me, I'm big on, but like, do you want me to do this? Just happened. Yeah, yeah just happened yesterday. Literally asked that exact question. You want me to do this? And she was like, yeah. You said it like that? That's I, how you said it? Yeah, you said you heard it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I called that. I called yeah. that. That's like you said Because you can't be lame with it. Like, niggas be acting like everything <laughs> lame. You don't got to be lame with it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, just be like, yeah, Yo, you want me to do this? And then she go, yes. Like, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. And that's all I'm looking for, bro. Yeah. Like, as soon as I figured out, figured that shit out, bro, it's straight, bro. Yeah. A lot of the time, niggas don't be wanting to ask questions and do shit because they feel like it's lame, bro. Trying you to do all this shit. You gotta cover your ass, bro. Just cover your ass. Cover Make sure you ass. ask questions. Yeah. Make sure you talk before and after. Make sure she was comfortable. I'm asking questions like, yo, was that Be respectful. Was yeah. All that shit. It's not that. To me, that's what I mean when I say it's not that hard. Like, yeah. for niggas to be completely blindsided, that mean if if you do all the shit I'm talking about and then you get charged or something, you I would go scorched earth. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say I would never settle because if I did all that and then you say, oh, he made me do something when I know I would never in my life do some shit like that and I asked you a bunch of questions before and after, I'm going to go scorched earth on you. I'm going to release the messages. I'm going to call you a liar. I'm going to really kill you for uh for basically abusing the fact that people get abused. Like you, you using their pain because you like a piece of shit, basically. Like, I would kill you. So when I see niggas not doing that, I'm always like, bruh. It's, it's a baseball player that got suspended. Uh, last year that did yeah, this. Yeah, the Dodgers. Yeah, he yep. did the same shit. He was like, bruh, I will die before I give you money. Like, I'll stop playing baseball before I give you money. I'm rich, bitch. Yeah. We can go, we can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. I got text messages. I got your text messages to your friends where you was like, oh, I'm with this nigga. I'm finna fuck this nigga. We just came up. Like, bro. I, nigga, when these niggas be bowing out, taking the bread or paying the bread out, bro, you better be Kobe. You better be in the middle of your fuck, the the hooping through your life, or some crazy shit better be going on with you if you settle. You don't settle if all you got to do is fight, bro. Yeah, you do not do that shit because yeah. we not gonna forget, bro. Yep, that's true. That's true, man. Um, I don't know. So we gonna pause for the calls for a second, man. Shout out to my peoples over at Beyond. You know. I'm a billionaire, you know what I'm saying? What you mean? Make sure you sit responsible. You know, it's a French liqueur, you know what I'm saying? You know, something for the bosses, you know. Shout out to the whole squad over there. Brett Barish, uh, Rose, of course. Uh, shout out to my brother, uh, damn Zoe. You already know what it is, man, of course. But um, some more crazy shit happened 
over the thing uh, over the course of the Thanksgiving break. Mm-hmm. You know, we had the 50th anniversary of hip hop. You know, saying so we had a celebration for the Falcons and the Saints game. You know, what I'm saying every major artist, every producer, the DJs, all out there on the field. Like only person who was missing was like Andre 3000. That was it. Like they literally had everybody out there. You know, what I'm saying they had two of our coworkers out there. You know, what I'm saying Greg Street, DJ Jelly. Greg. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, was, Jelly was out there. Yeah, Jelly was out hey, there too. My boy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it was it was a beautiful thing. Um, of course, we won the game, thankfully, because it would be some real Atlanta shit for us to have all that going on and then Should've lose. Lost. You know what I'm saying? That game. Shout out to Ludacris. Should've he lost. did the pregame performance. He came down from the ceiling. That was lit. I like yeah, that. That was lit. Because usually Michael that's shit. Freddie the Falcon who does that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know, Ludacris came down. He performed. Jameis Winston on the sideline rapping bar for bar with him. I'm uh, a it, nigga. Yeah, it was a good time in the city, of course. But... Some wild shit happened uh, while this was going on. Uh, T.I. and his son, King, got into a little situation. And this went viral quick because King was live. He was on his IG live during the situation. So they having a back and forth. He talking about how hard he had it coming up. Of course, you know, parents, you know what I'm saying, mom and dad, you know what I'm saying. They was like, nigga, you wasn't shit. You was a silver spoon. You ain't had shit, da 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 You was over at your grandma's house because you was goddamn, you was a crybaby. You wanted to have your pass by, passy, and all this other shit like that. And then eventually, you know, uh, he gets into his feelings. As he, he gets disrespectful. How- okay, as he should. <laughs> as okay, he should. cool, okay. All right, we're going to get to that. So he, he gets disrespectful, and then... um. You know, T.I. had pushed to jack him up as a parent. Yeah, he pushed as his a mom. Parent. He did the thing you, you, everybody, every boy knows you can't do. You can't push your mom off. Oh, oh, it's more to that, though, because I got some details from an insider, you know what I'm saying, who was in the room at the time. Uh, and uh, it went viral quick. I think T.I. handled that shit perfectly. When your kid gets disrespectful publicly in the house, it don't fucking matter. You got to check their ass. You got to jack their ass up. You know what I'm saying? And like, you could tell that. You know, T.I. put that that fear of God in his heart real quick. You know what I'm saying? You can't do nothing with me, nigga. You can't do shit with me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, and on that couch. That's how it be. Yeah, man. But you said he, he should have got in his feelings. Why? No, no. I was saying he should have got in his feelings because I was fucking with him. I was fucking with him. He got upset that I was fucking with him. And he was on live. So he probably was thinking about that type of shit. But what I'm saying is, um, first of all, yeah, you're right. His dad did handle it the way you handled it as a father, I think. I also don't think he lying, though. I believe him. When he be saying all that shit about not being with them like that and I growing that up, part too. I believe him. And I believe what he be saying about uh, not, I think, because all I, this is the second one of them kids that have said the same shit. I think that they really do portray themselves differently than how they were with them. And I believe that. Yeah. I can't help but believe that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a nigga from, Bay- I T.I. is like, when was my first favorite rapper. He a neighborhood hero. He just built a fucking apartment complex with an old Kmart is. Shout out to T.I. and Killer Mike. But, that don't mean that you was the most attentive father at all times while you were working on your career, in and out of jail, having to handle shit. And I'm not knocking him for that, 100%. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do to provide, yeah. bro. That don't mean that that little nigga don't suffer from that, though. And that don't mean that the shit he be saying about, yo, y'all used to leave me here and then come get me when it was time for us to be on TV. That shit, even if that shit not 100% true, there's some truth to that. Because okay. the girl said the same thing when they were talking about uh, Tiny leaving her her grandma house to go on tour with T.I. I believe them kids. Yeah. They're not lying. All of them kids that talk, that y'all actually hear talk, say the same things. Okay. The two that don't talk, y'all don't ever hear nothing about. Yeah. But I believe that shit. So, you know what I'm saying? You can't you can't push your mom ever. You know what I'm saying? So, the way T.I. handled that, I think that was 100% right. But it was, it was deeper than that. Not only did he push Tiny, I got this news today. Uh-huh. Somebody who was in the room. Not only did he push Tiny, but allegedly he called Tiny out of her name. Yeah. He called her the B word. And Tip had to punch him in the mouth for that shit. That's cool, which too. Which he should have. Yeah, that's cool, too. Which he should have. But I think it speaks to a bigger issue because, okay, yeah, your childhood wasn't what you w- would have hoped it would have been because of my career. Fully understand that. Where do you get off saying that you had a struggle life, though? I was taking care of your grandma, too. So him saying, I'm from over there. Like, his grandma was staying at a regular house. They was in a regular house. I'm not saying they weren't well taken care of, but they was like, they stayed in the same place. I probably would, 
Matter of fact, now that I think about it, most of the people I know that have millions of dollars, their parents live in the same place. They yeah, just renovate. Absolutely. They just renovate this shit on the yeah. inside and stuff like that. So all that shit made sense. But I think what he be talking about, because this is what I don't learn, right? Because I used to be one of them niggas where, like, say a, a nigga that was lame when we was in high school, then we, like, a couple years later, like, damn, bro, died? Like, what he was doing? Selling, yeah. selling weed. What? He got killed selling weed. He was in the band. Yeah, that nigga decided he wanted to sell weed, nigga, and carry guns and shit like that. Guess what that make that nigga? A thug. Now, he, just because you didn't grow up thugging and doing all type of hard shit, don't mean you can't decide that you want to do of some course, shit. Of course, absolutely. And then go out your way to do it. Absolutely. But I'm not, I'm not even saying that as far as, uh, bro. What I'm saying is if he really wanted to find that shit and he wasn't with his parents, how do they know he didn't go out walking around with his friends, finding shit, doing shit that he shouldn't have been doing? Yeah. Just because they're rich, and when he's with them, he get to be rich. That don't mean something. I you just get was to thinking, be rich when you're not with him. Dog, I was just talking about Michael Irvin's son with my partners because Michael Irvin went on TV and made yeah. fun of his son for yeah. doing that tough shit, right? Yeah. Look up Michael Irvin's son. Michael Irvin's son is in fucking prison right now. The one Nick, of them. No, the one he was talking oh, about. Bro. Yes. The right. rapper. He's in prison right now. That nigga is whatever he say he doing or whatever y'all, it could be whatever you want to. Just because you're rich don't mean that that's how this nigga live. Of course. Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. But here's the thing, though. I'm not a parent yet, but I do know this. It's one thing for you to choose to go do some shit, yeah. and it's another thing for you to paint the picture as if you were struggling all your life. No, I don't think nigga. that's fair to T.I. I don't that's think not that's fair. fair to no parent. I don't think that's fair that's to anybody fair to no that, parent. that sacrifices that's... and shit like that for you. Yes, exactly. When, when I'm going out. out my way to give you everything so far, I'm going out my way so far to the point to where it's affecting your childhood just to give you better than what I had. He has a sense of entitlement that comes with being somebody's son like that. But you also got to think, this is why, you know what I'm saying, I get Bootsy flat. You know, I always appreciate appreciate about Bootsy. When all that shit was going on with his son and people was asking him questions about his son, that nigga would get on every camera he could, look directly in the camera and say, I fucked up. It was me. I fucked up. I had him with me all the time. I was doing all type of shit. He was going to drug houses and shit like that. Tootie, Tootie act like that because I let Tootie act like that for too long, and now it's too late for me to stop. Yeah. I ain't never heard T.I. talk about that with He seems like the same kind, not like, as far, let me let me uh, make sure I'm clear on what I'm saying, because T.I. seemed like a great dude, and you know what I'm saying, like I said, neighborhood hero. When this nigga was born, T.I. was getting in trouble a lot around that time. Yeah. And by the time that he would have been in his adolescence, that's still a crazier version of T.I. That's the same That's the same nigga that ran down on Floyd. That's the same nigga that had to go to jail for the guns. That's the same nigga during this time that was doing that. That go back. That went back. That's the he got married. That's the same nigga. So how how are we? we I feel like people are looking at T.I. now and saying, oh, yeah, this nigga life was great. You don't know that. This nigga was in jail when this nigga was like a little kid. Okay. He was really gone. Like, really yeah. gone. Then when he came home from jail, guess what you got to do when you come home from jail, y'all, if you were entertainment? You gotta Hit go right the back fucking to road. You have to go. You got to go make money to provide for this nigga. So how are you going to tell this nigga what he was doing while you were gone? And that's my, that's my thing. I feel like people not giving him, not, cre- like, don't give credit. I'm saying giving him the bail for that. Because that's hard. I don't know what that's like to be away from my, my mom. Has never been away from me for that long. I'm, I I don't know what it would be like to grow up without my mom for for months at a time. Then they gotta leave again and go do shit for the road. It's like I might see you three months out of the twelve months. That's a lot, bro. I don't know what this nigga was doing, and it's no way for him to know exactly what this nigga was doing. Okay. That's my bigger thing. When you send these niggas off to school and shit, think about sending your kid to school right now. You think you got control over what they see and do? It's completely out of your hands. This nigga could have been a terror for all we know. For okay. all we know. Just because the niggas be having good shit at the house don't mean they take advantage of it or even understand that they lucky to be in that position. When you entitled, you take it. When you entitled, you take shit for granted, bro. I'm assuming that bro took that shit for granted. And more than more than anything, it sounds yeah. like he loved his dad. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But all that, fuck all that silly shit he was doing, all that tough shit. I think bro was embarrassed because he was on live and his parents didn't know he was on live and they was cooking his ass and he really got in his feelings. That's why I said you should get in feelings because he was getting embarrassed and that's how kids act when they feel embarrassed. They lash out. See, I also did what you do when they lash out. You handle that shit and you squash it. All that shit was perfectly fine. I just don't be with people just pawning it off as he's like a spoiled brat and this terrible kid when it's like, bro, y'all do not know how this nigga felt growing up. Okay. That's all that matters is how okay. he, to him, all that matters is how he feels. The truth can be the truth. Yeah. 
The truth can be the truth. What matters to that nigga is how he felt when this nigga wasn't around. Okay. What matters to him is how he felt when he was figuring shit out. Okay. Okay. I feel all that. And as somebody whose father went to the feds twice, I'm going to say this. You can say all of that, and yes, you do go through a lot when you have a parent that's away. I I know for mm-hmm. from personal experience, I understand that. But it's one thing for you to say, you know what, yeah, you know what I mean, maybe, you know, I was just doing stupid shit or whatever, you know, or I decided to do that type of shit. It's one thing to do that, but it's a whole nother thing to try, again, to try to paint your childhood as if you had it as bad as your parent did, as your dad did, mm-hmm. when... I'm going out my way to give you a better fucking life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, just like how Boosie got in front of them cameras and said, you know what? I fucked up because I was doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He King should say that same shit, too. Should you know be. what? You should say the same shit, too. You know what I'm saying? Listen, hey, my, I, I have great parents, but I decided to do stupid shit. That's perfectly fine. That's understandable. What was it's T.I. Disrespectful. doing? It's disrespectful as fuck when you try to make it seem like your parents did not try to, their best to I give you the best, the best childhood ever. I you think that is saying? disrespectful. You was in the bando because you wanted to be in the bando, my if nigga. If he even was, yeah. Yeah, even if, 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 he, he was, if he was. I'm not here to say if you were or yeah. if you weren't. I don't know what you did. But you decided that. That's the difference, and that's, and that's where the problem comes in. At. I feel like that's one hundred percent fair too. My another thing I would say is, I hate doing this, bro, because this is like I really do. Fuck. Ti like my was my first favorite rapper. Ti was Ti was a wild nigga, bro. Yeah, you he think, was. You think he when was. he you think when he was at the crib with his young his his Ti from bro, I'm from West Side myself, bro. I know how. I, you think when T.I. had his two young sons or his his four young sons at the house, he wasn't trying to, like, get them tougher and shit like that? You know what I'm saying? Got them acting like him, acting doing the shit he does and shit like that? You don't think that shit carries over, like, as you get older, if it's not unche- if it go unchecked? Especially if you're not there all the time and I get to just go to school and figure this shit out. I'm the king's son. You named me king. I get to walk around and say we from— ba-. Bro, I, nigga, when I moved from uh, Bankhead to, to Fairburn and shit like that, that's 90% of the niggas that's hard. Like, they, they act hard. They well, my dad was my dad was this. My dad was that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Niggas got drug money and yeah. shit, and they living good, yeah. but they get to walk around and pretend like they the niggas that was in the field doing that shit because they may fuck with it. Like, my dad was an OG crip. You know what I'm saying? I'm 16. My dad got motion and money, I be fresh as hell and I get to throw up crib in all my pictures. You know what I'm saying? That's how that shit usually work, bro. So how can you, it's hard for me to not, all that shit come back to parenting. To me, to me, all that shit is a big ass circle that lead to them two. If you had this nigga at the crib and you was showing him all this shit, he acting like you. He, you just said it yourself. If he acting like you, nigga, and then he grow up and he not you because you didn't fucking grow up the way you grew up and now he just portraying some shit, he looks stupid. And guess what? The nigga looks stupid. He does. He was embarrassing himself. Yes. But his embarrassment was a reflection of you. All that shit comes from how you're raised. Nah, you don't act nah. like, bro. You don't act. You can go nah. out and you can find yourself the older you get and shit like that. But some shit is your core, bro. His attitude and shit like that has been like this. He didn't just turn into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His attitude has he been like this. He didn't turn into this. And, and, it and, went and even T.I. said this. T.I. said this a few years ago. He said, bro, listen, I've been trying my best to, it's too late. Yeah, to work on to work with him, but at the end of the day, I told his mama, his grandmamas, it's this boy, this is who he is, and the only way he gonna change is if something happened. And the re- but and that, the, and that, all right, so up. look, in that statement, if I was talking to him, I would have said, Why is he? Why is this who he is? Everybody you is can't who they are. You can't control that though. You can't control that. You, you can't, can't control, control that. that, but everybody is who they are for a person. If you ask him, if you would have asked T.I. why he is T.I. or why he is who he is, he would have told you because of how I grew up. The stuff I saw, the people I was around. Yeah. If you ask Brad the same question, he could tell you the same thing. Yeah, but you chose to be around them people. You don't, blame your, you don't, you blame, your don't, don't blame your dad. Don't blame your mama. I already don't agree. Don't blame your dad. Don't blame your mama. I already and agree. It's thing. not fair. It, 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 and what you're saying, like you want to say his parents, and bruh, at the end of I could say my dad. Prime example. My dad is the oldest son of a of a famous preacher. My grandfather was a famous preacher back in the 90s. In the state of North Carolina, he was mm-hmm. that nigga mm-hmm. back in the day. Dog. So how you going, at the end of the day, my dad came up from the same family. His other siblings wasn't like that, didn't do the things that he did. Right. He right. chose that on his own. And that was him as a man, like, figuring on his journey as a man, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, He's as a teenager man. still, or 20 or some shit. He hasn't yeah, gone yeah, yeah. on his manly journey yet. Okay, okay, but don't, but again, you don't, you don't get to blame, 
to try to make it seem like I'm the bad guy. I don't think that's fair. As a You're bad right. parent. And not only that, you don't disrespect me when I'm correcting you, telling you that you had a good life. Well, that's, well, that's normal shit. As a shit. parent. That's normal parent, shit. No, 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 no. Because this thing, like, when you have kids, you're yeah. going to see it too. And I got nieces, so I can say this. Like, when you going out your way, you taking care of them and giving them all this shit like that, you doing your part as a parent. You right. may not be the best. Ain't nobody perfect in, in parenting. That's a fact. Let's get that out there. Ain't nobody perfect. But at the end of the day, when you giving your child the best, and then you going to get on live. Yeah. And then his parents knew he was on live because Tiny took the phone. After, yeah. but Tiny took the phone and was like, nah, he So wait, it. let me stop. Hold on. Stop, stop. All right. So look, this, this is what I think the generational divide like be at, like for a lot of people, because- you can buy. You can take care of. You can take. Make sure your children are taken care of, and they have the best shit, and they're in the best schools and the best programs. I don't think that necessarily make you a good parent. I think that makes you a good provider. I think being a good parent means that you make sure your kid is emotionally developed, and you make sure that with their well being is cared for, and the person that they're growing into. That's parenting to me. I That's think providing. Too, yeah. I think providing is a part of parenting, but the parenting overall is about more than just I had you in a nice house and I had you in fresh clothes and all that other shit. It's people without all that shit that have great parents. You know what I'm saying? Shit, T.I. parents didn't yeah. have all that shit and they were great parents. So that shit doesn't equal good parenting to me. That just equals you have money to but take care of But we can't say, but but we can't say that he wasn't. I can't. Than I, him. I can't comment on if he a good parent or not. I'm just talking. I'm, 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 first of all, I'm taking the other side of this, but I'm just saying that to me, it's more than just, yo, you go to a good school, you got good clothes, and you in a big house. That doesn't mean that you was a good parent. To me, that means that you have money. Anybody, you can do that without being, you can do that without thinking, what's the newest toys every year, and just buy all the newest shit. What's the freshest clothes that niggas in school is wearing, and buy all that shit, and have no real connection with your kids. Yeah. You can see them niggas two times a year and do all that shit. Yeah. So that doesn't equal parenting to me. And when I see somebody that don't really have respect for their parents publicly, you know what I'm saying, especially as like a young, like 18, 19, 20 years old, I think it's like, damn, one of them things where y'all not really together like that. Like, y'all not locked in as y'all are saying y'all locked in. And that's where I think he pushes back because he feels like they they portray him a certain way in their family and to the Internet, which is why he got upset. That's why I said as he should. I don't know if that necessarily is right or wrong. I'm just saying it'll make logical sense that if you feel like you're being played with all the time and then you say something, yeah, it might, it might go poorly. Even if you aren't being played with, even if you, you're misunderstanding shit, that's just how you're interpreting it. That makes sense to me. Even if you're wrong, it makes the logic that you use it makes sense to me. That's fucked up that he decided to put his hands on his mom. There's also good that also lets you know that they're a real family. That that video not out, and I ain't heard that nowhere. That and it's good that he handled that shit because that's what you do. When I used to get out of line, somebody would fly. Uncle would just fly in out of nowhere and just you know what I'm saying, quick one. Just be like, nigga, you're not that big, bro. He'd be like, damn, bro, this nigga grown. Okay, I gotta remember that shit like that. I think that type of shit is normal for men. Boys in general, especially black kids, you want to, you know what I'm saying, you want to rise yeah. up type shit. And sometimes I think it's important for it to be a line drawn in the sand where it's like, oh, you can't actually do this, nigga. You cannot. Like, I thought I was big when I got to fight with my uncle. Then I was like, oh, this nigga really strong. Like, I'm, I can pick up heavier <laughs> shit than him, though. But he's strong. And that you need them type of moments to be like, all right, let me think about what just happened. Let me recalibrate. But even, but, but even when you have those moments, even when you have those moments, Certain kids are just like that. Like that whole entitlement thing that you was talking about, that's mm -hmm. really a rampant thing amongst a younger generation. You know what I'm saying? I think I think it's weird. I think I think it's weird. Real. And honestly, I do believe that it's more people who portray to be as rich as T.I., which which aren't, you know how social media are, is yeah. the same thing. They they clothing their kids and all the Gucci and all this other shit and like that. There. And they kids, and they kids real life gonna be straight disrespectful with them when they get they're, a little exactly bit older. Because they're not actual parents. And that's what I'm saying. They not a, a lot of like how people say every gener every generation people say the kids that are coming out yeah, now are yeah, worse. worse. It's not that's not necessary. That may be true, but that ain't the case, nigga. The parents are worse, nigga. Yeah, the kids are worse because every generation of parents is more lenient, or or they 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 require less, yeah. or they you know what I'm saying. Uh, people get rewarded for for less every yeah. generation of parents. So yeah, you can say that the kids are worse. Duh, the kids are worse. They can only be worse if the parenting is worse. Yeah. So every fucking 10 years, shit does get worse. Yeah. When I see people that are my age with kids, I always be thinking like, damn, I don't think this nigga good at this shit. 
or this girl is good at this shit. And I'm surprised when I meet kids that are super respectful and well off and shit like that. And I'm like, damn, okay, she got, she know what she's doing. She making sure this nigga good. She making sure this nigga head on straight. Cause that's what parenting is. Yeah. Parenting is not making sure your kid got on Burberry sweaters and shit like that. Parenting is making sure that your kid understands why it was wrong to pull that girl hair. Why it was wrong for you to yell at that teacher. I'm a perfect example of one of those kids that I got, nigga, for between, I looked at it before I graduated, between uh, fifth grade and 12th grade, I got rolled up 168 times. I got suspended, I got suspended like 15 bro. times. But I, but look, I used to get in trouble for playing. I, you see, I get paid to talk now. I used to get in trouble for talking, yeah. playing, making jokes, uh, every now and then arguing with a teacher. I got in trouble once for calling a teacher a bitch when I was arguing with her. The reason I called her a bitch was because I got upset because she called us stupid. Now, when she wrote me up, of course she didn't say, I called the class stupid. Yeah. And I was like, oh, she being a bitch. And I got in trouble for that. You know what I'm saying? My mom was like, nigga, you can't. Like, I got in trouble at home, obviously. Yeah. And she was just like, it don't matter who the fuck you do. If somebody, if you at work and you, your boss call y'all idiots, you don't fucking say, well, you an idiot. You just goddamn ignore what he said and do what you got to do. And that was when I had to learn that, you know what I'm saying, you get more and more understanding. I got in trouble for years. And then not, when I got to a certain age, everything quit. And it was yeah. just like, oh, this doesn't make sense anymore. I was way worse than I am now with, with not holding in like my thoughts. I used to say whatever would come to my mind. I never used to think about what other people would say or think after I left a room. Nothing like that. Now I think about those things. All that shit comes from my parent and my uh, family. My family talking to me and being like, bro, if you want to do this, you got to do this. If you want to do that, you got to do this. I feel like a lot of kids... Bro, these niggas are getting sent to school and can't read, bro. Like, these right, niggas don't right, have good parents, right, bro. Right. I don't know how else to explain that shit. Right. I don't want to sit here and act like... I'm not talking about T.I. and Tony anymore. I'm just saying, in general, yeah, yeah, in general, the last generation, the the kids, like... If you... Bro, if this girl that I went to school with is like a year older than me, her son like eight, nine years old now. Yeah. That's like... He, he almost in fifth grade. He going to be in middle school soon. The nigga yeah. play rec ball and shit like that. And all I be thinking sometimes is, this nigga was born after Don't Like came out. There was a whole generation of kids. Their first introduction to music will be Chief Keef, Lil Reese, all that shit that I was loving at the time. I was a part of that shit. And we pushed it right on to the kids that was up under us. And guess what happened? Now kids are killing each other at an alarming rate because of the music. It all trickles down. I blame us for that shit. I blame myself for that shit. And I blame myself. Yeah, I was a part generation. of that shit. We I blame myself for y'all generation. Like, I always say, like, like when it comes to the younger generation, you know, I graduated high school 06. I can say I this. was 10. Yeah, exactly. I can say a lot of the shit that, that happens with this younger generation, I always look at us because I'm like, who you think they got it from? Exactly. When kids pick up their phone and want to record everything. Exactly. And shit like that. That started with my generation, even though you couldn't see shit. You know what I'm saying? And it was very, very, very slim numbers because niggas wasn't pulling their phones YouTube out like just that. just came out when you was graduating college. It was like 06. YouTube 06. came out 04. Yeah, 04. I'm, that's what I'm saying. But like, but it got massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it went. That's what I, And the reason why I wanted to get on YouTube is because I went to my older cousin's house and saw him on YouTube. The reason why I wanted an iPod, saw older cousins with iPods. Exactly. The reason why you watch BET, older cousins watch BET. All everybody just tries to do whatever they think was cooler yeah. from the older people around them. And if you fuck, if they end up eighteen and they fucking idiots, it's because nobody corrected nobody. Facts, facts. So blame yourself, not blame yourselves. Blame, blame ourselves. Bro. Yeah, it's blame. Not, like, it's just a whole generation. You can't blame it a kid. Down. To it me, you, down. you can't blame a kid for being stupid. To me, that's why I always shoot bail when I like we was talking about with Cassie. I always shoot bail to somebody I feel like is getting preyed on or played with. I always shoot bail. I always feel like uh, kids need better understanding, even if they fucking st stupid and they shoot people. I'd be like, bro, that nigga just don't understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? He really don't understand his life going to be yeah. over. A lot of them niggas, bro, it's just too much shit that it, it's too much shit that go into that shit to just write kids off as like a bad generation yeah. or a lost generation when it's clear as day that all it takes is course correction and it's like. I ain't sitting here saying you need to pull your kids to the side and make sure they read the Bible every night and all this other shit. But I just think people don't talk as much yeah. to their kids. People don't understand their children as much. They see certain things as far as they don't as have talk. real conversations with their kids. They're not being honest with their kids. They're not being honest with them about who they are, where they are, the things they've seen, the things they've life, done. Life, life in general, the you know world. What I'm like, that's, that, and that's why I was saying earlier, like, the way you portray yourself at the house 
You know what I'm saying? To your kids, you might want to, in your head, you might be thinking like, yo, I want my son to be cool at school. I want him to, you know what I'm saying, get get the little girls. I want him to not be pussy and all that shit. And then however you convey that to that nigga, he will take. Yep. Believe me, he going to take it. Now, if he take that shit and he didn't understand exactly what the fuck you was trying to inst- instill in him, and he take it as, first nigga I see, I'm going to knock the fuck out this nigga, bro. That's your fault, nigga. You can't blame him yeah. for that. Yeah. You can say he when he get in trouble, they gonna blame him. You when you talking to him, you can tell him that he made a choice. But deep down in your soul, nigga, you need to know you thought it would be good to teach your son how to fight. Yeah. You thought that shit made sense. Oh yeah, you still gotta teach your son. And you say you do. You do have to teach him how to, exactly. And then you gotta explain to this nigga, hey, you know what we don't do? Hit niggas first. Unless they, unless you are in a terrible situation, yeah. you do not if hit a nigga first. Yeah, if you feel you at school, run. you do not punch one of these niggas first because I done taught you how to fight for real. Yeah. And you send this nigga to school and he'll be perfectly fine. So, I, bro, it's niggas that, bro, it, it's just a lot, bro. And I be feeling like a lot of the time, including the King situation was just a quick encapsulation of it. You write the kids off as being entitled, spoiled, and you know what I'm saying, snotty-nosed brats. Instead of asking, why is this nigga like this? Yeah, what can make you like this? Yeah, but sometimes it ain't the parents. Sometimes it's not the parents, but you got to make sure it's not the parents. I start there. Sometimes it's not the parents, but you start. It only makes sense to start there because this is where they spent most of their time. It don't make sense to start in the, with their homies in the neighborhood and shit like that. If I'm in, if I'm trying to figure out why somebody that's not even twenty years old is wilding out, I need to first figure out all right, what kind of home life does this nigga have? First of all, if you live through your, if you only with your niggas and shit, that's again parenting. Why are you only with your niggas and you can't drive nowhere, or you can't make decisions for yourself or sign shit? How is that possible? I know when I used to want to do shit with my niggas, my mama would step on that shit. And I couldn't do certain shit. Nigga, I wanted to go to underground right before they shut underground down when that nigga got stabbed. I, I was dressed, nigga. I was dressed. <laughs> Niggas was outside waiting on the nigga. She said, where you going? Underground. <laughs> You're not going to underground. I was like, what, nigga? What? what? Whole argument. I'm talking about I was mad as shit. I'm sweating, nigga. Didn't get to go nowhere. Sat in the house. Next morning we wake up. Stabbing. Mat- three Multiple people stabbed in underground Atlanta. All she was doing was eating breakfast laughing. Laughing. I swear to God, I put this on her life. Laughed at me and said, oh, you wanted to go, right? You wanted to go? And I was like, damn, bro, that shit lame, bro. That was also the same year that girl, that, that bullet came through on uh, the ceiling and killed that boy in church. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I remember that. They were shooting in the air, and a bullet just came down and hit a little boy in church. I was like, damn, bro. I had that happen in my car. Uh, the bullet just came through? Yeah, I wasn't in the car. I It was, uh, it was after New Year's, night after New Year's Eve. I was staying in the apartments in Stockbridge and got down. I walk out to my car. I had a uh, I had a Honda, Honda yeah. Civic, nice ass car too. I had bought it for my sister, and um, I go out to my car and I see it. It's on the driver's side, but it's in the back. Came straight through. It it didn't go all the way through, but I could see you. You could see the whole. I remembered it vividly. I was that like, shit, damn, that it, shit's scary, yeah, nigga. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, that was scary. when I realized, oh, you nigga really just died. Like no matter what, like you don't yeah, even gotta do nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. And, and speaking of this younger generation, real quick, as we wrap up this episode, so um, I I just we watched. Uh, season four of The Wire for like the umpteen time. Fire ass season. Oh, that's Fire uh, that's what uh, that's what uh, my boy. Marlo, yeah, and uh, uh, the kids though, yeah, right? Yeah, the kids. Hey, the mom, worst. Uh, name it, mom. Yeah. Wor- one of the worst moms in TV history. Yeah, but you want to know something though? I I watched it and I said, you know what? That right there is exactly how they're describing this younger generation right there. Yeah. With Marlo and all of them, just like when Monk shot uh old dude, the boxing coach, for nothing. You know what I'm He was like, bro, if I was talking to you, man, you know. Bah, he shot him. Then wanted to kill him, but then, you know what I'm saying? He stopped him. But I, I, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes, like, the stuff be out there. You know what I mean? Only thing at the end of the day, I mean, only thing we can all can do is do our part, you know. But You know uh, how they was talking about the kids, though? Huh? Think about, like, how think about how oh, yeah, old yeah. that show is first. How old kids, that show is. The teachers were saying that shit. They was the, like, bro, hey, keep it cold in there. They'll fall asleep. Bro, a whole bunch of other kids, shit. But think about how old them kids is right now. Them niggas yeah, is 30. They grown. They they 30. Them niggas was older than me, bro. So them niggas they is They all grown. my age. They exactly. all my age. Them niggas grown, grown, bro. And even back then, dog, all that shit was circumstance and parenting. 20 years ago, a lot of them niggas, Michael, parenting situation, terrible. Name it. Dad terrible. was a fucking idiot. Doogie, terrible parent situation. The other nigga was in foster care. Yeah. Ended up getting branded a snitch. 
all terrible home life situations, and yet nobody thinks that they need to focus on. It's always the kids. They like they couldn't see that, bro. We, well, this nigga Weebay son, this is Weebay son. He feel like he gotta be like this. You don't feel like, oh, this Ti son. He feel like he gotta be like this. He might maybe he look at what his other brothers and shit do, do where they stay to themselves and they make their music, and he think it's lame. He think we need to be repping our dad like this. How can I say that that's not that, that that's not deeper than just him? Okay. That's deep. That's deep shit that you gotta you gotta work through, bro. Okay. okay. But I want I want niggas to I want niggas to just you know what I'm saying talk to their families and shit. Yeah. Like it, nah, I want, I'm talking about the kids. I'm yeah. talking about I want the kids. Like if kids yeah, you know want parents to, and kids, and you know, like really had that time, and that's one of the reasons why I stopped my sneaker giveaway because you know, like I people always ask me like, how come you don't do a sneaker giveaway anymore? And I told them like, yo, these kids don't need sneakers; they need time with their parents. They need a hug. They need some love. They need honesty. You know what I'm saying? Because shit, a lot of them gonna be fucked up just because you know what I'm saying. Lost in the sauce. They don't ain't know no better, man. You know what I'm saying? But. Shit, that's another episode of Sauce TV. As you can see, man, we had a fiery discussion on both sides, you know what I'm saying, with multiple topics, man. But that's that's why I have Austin as a co-host, man, because Austin bring bring that shit in always, man. But uh, Austin, let them know how they can follow you, support you, bro. Follow me on Instagram, L-I-K, so stupid. Uh, follow Voices in the Street on Filter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We about 15 subscribers away from 600 uh, subs. So go ahead, do that for us. Um... Follow Voices in the Street, uh, unfiltered on TikTok. Hey, man, you already know, man. Make sure you follow me at DJ Sturgis, man. Like we always say, man, keep God first. And I always let your sauce drip. Another episode of Sauce TV. We gone. What you mean?